Hi, I'm Ben Frakes. And I'm Holly Carter, and this is Ready Nation. Welcome to Ready Nation, a show where you can catch on all the latest news on your Henderson Readies. Another week and another win for the Lady Ready basketball team. This week's victims, the Southern Arkansas University Lady Mule Riders. Five Lady Readies were in double figures in the 99-84 victory. The leading scorer was Jasmine Ellis, who had 25 points and 12 rebounds. The Lady Readies were down 10 late in the first half, but with a quick three-pointer by Ellis and a foul, the momentum quickly changed hands. The ladies also shot 81% from the free throw line. The Lady Readies open play in the Gulf South Conference Tournament on March the 3rd. The games will be played in South Haven, Mississippi, but times and opponents have not yet been announced. As soon as we know, we'll let you know. The men's ready basketball team also hosted Southern Arkansas University last Saturday. Although the ready shot well from the field, the early turnovers were the deciding factor in the game. SAU scored 27 points off 22 turnovers to beat the Reddies 88-75. 15 of those turnovers came in the first half. The Mule Riders mounted a 10-point lead going into halftime and led the remainder of the game. The Reddies only scored two field goals in the first 11 minutes of the second half. Despite the poor offensive production in the second half, four Reddies ended the night in double figures. Lucas Wisenhunt led the team with 19, Marlon Johnson added 13 points, and Jonathan Fitzgerald scored 11, and Josh French posted a double-double with 11 points and 10 boards. With the loss, Henderson drops to 2-10 in the Gulf South Conference. The Reddies' next opponent, Washita Baptist University. The final chapter of this year's Basketball Battle of the Ravine tips off Thursday, February 24th at Washita. I'll be there, Holly will be there, you should be there. Don't want to miss it. Right after the break, we've got baseball and softball news coming right at you, so stay tuned. someday. You will get a job. You will be working. What do you want to be when you grow up? After a good opening day for the season, things went south for the Ready Baseball team. The men were swept in a doubleheader by Southeastern Oklahoma. Game one ended with a score of 14 to three, while game two was a shutout, seven to zero. Southeastern had 16 hits in the game, opening it up with a solo home run. Charlie Hillman hit a two-run double in the bottom of the second to get the Reddies on the board. The third and final run came for the Reddies from a solo home run from Gip Hendricks. In game two, the Savage Storm didn't allow the Reddies to get a single hit. Maybe things will get better for the Reddies, who are now 1-2 and two on the season. They have a string of home games before heading to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff on March 9th. Right after the break, Holly's got your softball news, so stay tuned. Uh, yo, what up? This is Polly Shore, and you're watching HDTV. HTTV. KS what? Yo, what up? This is Polly Shore, you're watching HTV. Check it out. Is that good enough? back to Ready Nation. The Diamond Ready softball team fared pretty well at the Southeastern Oklahoma Classic last weekend in Durant, Oklahoma. The ladies took home three victories in six games. 
It all started with a 9-8 victory over Central Oklahoma and an 8-6 win over Abilene Christian. The two wins were followed by two losses to Southeastern Oklahoma and Cameron. The ladies got a 2-1 victory over Texas Permian Basin, but followed with a 5-1 loss to Angelo State. Sarah Lankford led the Diamond Reddies going 10-for-20 in the tournament, including two doubles and four RBIs. Ashley Ray followed suit going 8-for-20 with six RBIs. The Diamond Reddies play at home again on March 5th when they host Missouri Western. The first pitch is scheduled for noon. Coming right up, we've got your Hog Basketball update. Stay right here. All right, guys, since our last show, the Arkansas Razorback basketball team has faced two different opponents with two very different outcomes. Last Thursday, the Hogs played host to the Florida A&M Rattlers at Bud Walton Arena, and they dominated the game from the start. Arkansas jumped out to a big lead early, hitting its first six field goals in a row, including a three-pointer from behind the arc. Arkansas led 45-11 to at the half. But Florida A&M played better in the second half, but the lead was too big to overcome. The Hogs went on to beat the Rattlers 94-55, with junior Rodney Clark and Marshawn Powell each contributing 16 points to the effort. Delvin Johnson almost had a double-double with 13 points and 9 rebounds. Now here is a good team stat. The starting five for Arkansas accounted for 60 points and shot for 78% from the floor. That's a sign of good chemistry among the front line. I agree, I agree. But unfortunately, the Hogs were not as cohesive with their second opponent. Arkansas traveled to Tuscaloosa on Saturday to take on the SEC Western Division leader, Alabama. It was a close battle in the first half, leaving the teams tied at 31 going into the half. But the tide pulled away from the Hogs in the second half by improving their shooting, and they ended the night 69-56, victorious over the Razorbacks. Rodney Clark, however, had another standout performance for the Razorbacks with 21 points and shooting 4 for 5 from the three-point line. Another standout for the Hogs was Glenn Bryant, who had a career-best five block shots in just 18 minutes on the court. The loss puts Arkansas at 5-7 and seven in conference play, and with just four games left, the Hogs will have to win out to have a chance at a bye for the conference tournament. The Hogs will attempt to do that as they host Kentucky on February 26th. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. Man, I hope they can do it. I'm from Louisiana. i got to cheer for my Tigers. Ah, go Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, guys. And all right, NASCAR fans, it's officially racing season. Last Sunday, the 53rd running of the Daytona 500 was one for the record books. 74 lead changes, 22 different leaders, along with a track record, 16 caution flags. The race lasted just under four hours. And when the dust settled, Trevor Bain emerged victorious. And that's right, I said it, Trevor Bain. If you've never heard that name, don't feel left out. I have it. I don't think anybody has. This was Trevor Bain's second NASCAR start ever. He is the youngest driver to ever win the Daytona 500 at 20 years and one day old. The race also marked the 10-year anniversary of Dale Earnhardt's deadly crash on the same course. The crowd took a moment to honor the memory of one of NASCAR's most legendary drivers by observing a moment of silence during the third lap. Fans held up three fingers in the air for the entire lap in honor of Earnhardt's number three car. The drivers will race again on March 6th in Las Vegas. Man, that was a crazy race. I've never watched NASCAR before. That was the first time for me. Well, I'm glad it was the Daytona 500 that you got to watch for your first race ever. I mean, the kid that won is younger than both of us. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? <sighs> Man. I couldn't do it. <laughs> uh, well, that's all we have for today, guys. Tune in next week. You can drop us a line on our Facebook page under Henderson Television. I'm Holly Carter. And I'm Ben Franks. And that's the score. <laughs>